Today, folks, we are taking a look at the Protection Group Denmark Arch Helmet and uh, my initial impressions of it. I got two of these helmets in, this green one here and then a black one to shoot. The black one we already shot here on the channel, so if you're interested in that, which I find it very interesting myself and definitely going to be referencing that video a lot in today's video, just talking about the overall ballistic protection of this helmet because it's a ballistic helmet, so it's got to stop some ballistic ballistics and uh, so check that video out I think it's uh, a fun video we shot the helmet with a bunch of different calibers and a bunch of different projectiles and uh, with a bunch of cool guns so here here is got stuff falling all over the place here is the helmet that we shot it's a 300 blackout subsonic stopped it dead in its tracks out of a rifle and uh, so it held up it held up for exactly every single thing that it was rated for and even then some um, and you can't be mad at that so today this video what we're doing right here right now we are taking a look at the helmet itself out of the box what do you get how do you like it how do you set it up uh, the feature set is it worth the money? Uh, am I happy with it? Again, I did not pay for this. Huge shout out to Protection Group Denmark for sending out both of the helmets. One to try out and long term test and evaluate. And then the other one to shoot. I obviously get to keep them both. And uh, that's awesome because stuff like that helps out the channel a ton. All this costs money, and working with companies in this manner definitely helps push the channel forward. So if nothing else, check them out. Uh, tell them I sent you if you end up buying anything from them. And if you do, make sure you use the link pinned in the comment section below because that gives me a little bit of a kickback and goes towards helping the channel. Either way, shameless self-promotion aside and uh, all bias aside, you know, again, like I said, full disclosure, they did send me both these helmets for free. We shot one. I'm keeping one. And... Uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. There's definitely some digs, some things that we will talk about, some negative Nancy nitpicky issues perhaps, but uh, I don't know. Stay tuned. Might be interesting. Okay, so first off, the helmet obviously does not come with any of the accoutrements as shown here. Um, this is a Unity Spark IR beacon. Uh, definitely a nice thing to have. They're super cheap. They're disposable. They last, you know, like 200 plus hours of runtime or whatever. They're like 15, 20 bucks. After you're done with it, you throw it away and uh, get another one. Hopefully, you're buying them in multiples so you have spares if need be. Little T Rex Arms battery carrier. So I got some CR 123s up there, you know, to run handheld flashlights, weapon lights, lambs, whatever it may be. And uh, then huge shout out to 100 Concepts for sending out the candy pouch and uh, Multicam Tropic. I'm really, really digging the Multicam Tropic lately. I think it's a sick camo way. I think it does well in the Midwest with the greener, darker forests uh, as opposed to standard Multicam, which is typically a little bit brighter. So, And then a uh, little IR flag patch from T-Rex Arms. So that stuff didn't come with it. And surely the Nocturnal Tendencies Argus Mount, which if uh, you're not up on this, make sure you check out my video and other people's videos on it. Uh, this thing is a Wilcox for a third of the price, and it's sick. It's well built. It's strong, sturdy, reliable, and has been working out great for me and all of my intended purposes for it. So it's a great addition to this helmet, but overall, the helmet just comes with the helmet, okay, and the pads, of course, but you don't get the mount. You don't get this, this, or this. Simple enough. Speaking of things you don't get with the helmet, um, you do get Velcro for the outside of the helmet, and it's actually a really, really sick configuration. I like the layout. It looks aggressive. It adds a, a cool, you know, modern look to the helmet, uh, but it does not come pre-installed. When I got my HHV Ballistic as well as the HHV Bump, the Velcro was already on there. They don't use as much Velcro, and it maybe doesn't look as cool, but it was already pre-installed onto the helmet. Now, this might seem nitpicky or not that big of a deal, and a lot of guys out there might like it better because then they can choose to use which plots of velcro that they want and which one's not and whatever that being said i think the helmet looks really good with all of them on there give you a little look at that you know obviously without the uh the stuff in the way here but basically you got your back for counterweight pouches goes up the top uh whatever you want beacons patches flag patches little uh princeton tech admin lights 
glints, whatever you want, all over the helmet. So super sick configuration for the Velcro in my opinion, but uh, a little nerve wracking having to put it on yourself. At first I was worried that perhaps if you know I didn't stick it in the right spot and I wanted to redo it, that uh, it would lift up the outer coating, the paint, whatever it may be on the outside of the helmet. Turns out I was wrong. It's actually pretty durable and resistant to that. This is very, very sticky stuff uh, on the other side of the Velcro as far as the adhesive is concerned. And uh, I was worried that, you know, if I didn't place it properly, I'd have to rip it up and uh, it would take some of the coating with it. It did not, in my case at least. I was very, very careful. In your case, perhaps it may. I don't know. Um, but one ding I'm going to have to give it. Again, nitpicky or not, uh, it, it would be nice to see the Velcro come pre configured from the factory in this you know situation we got here uh, in this configuration as it's shown on the website because that's kind of what I expected it to show up being now again end of the world no um, but for somebody who you know is super excited about it and then has to do it themselves and maybe they screw it up and these become you know too gummed up and they're not usable anymore you got to get new ones or or maybe you put them on there and it's just off a little bit but you ah but you're always you know worried about it it's bothering you in the back of your head again it sounds stupid and of course above all else function over form um, but if you could have something that works really well and looks good doing it why wouldn't you so yeah, moral to the story, I would like to have seen the Velcro come pre-installed from the factory onto the helmet. Again, you know, I understand people maybe not wanting to use it all, but if it's already on there and you don't want to use that section, just don't use that section. It's not the end of the world. And if anything, under night vision, the two different surfaces will create more of a camo than just one plain one. Plus, this could be a little bit shiny. Although, under nods, looking at it, uh, it does appear matte and uh, is IR compliant, which is a nice thing. Uh, so... What else? After we bitched and moaned about the Velcro, or lack thereof, out of the box. Uh, it is arc rail compatible. These are arc rails. They are plastic. Most of the helmets run plastic arc rails. Uh, there are some that perhaps have aluminum ones or whatever, but these are polymer plastic. Uh, again, pretty standard. No big deal. Standard bolt pattern. So any of your uh, arc rail compatible accessories will fit this, and uh, that's nice because while I really like the M-Lock on the HHV, it is a little bit more proprietary when it comes to specific helmet mounted accessories. So having the traditional arc rail where you don't have to worry about it, you can get the unities or the, the Peltors or the, you know, whatever and mount it directly to it. Uh, no big deal. You know, you could run amp arms back there, whatever it is. You could do the same thing with the M lock. You just need some extra adapters. So, uh, like it. You know, arc rails, it's again the, the Glock 19 of helmet mounted rail accessory configurations. And uh, it's old school, it's been around for a long time, but it's getting it done. As far as the helmet shape, uh, it's definitely a high cut. And I like that because it's more modern. It looks cool, but it's also lighter weight compared to like a Mitch or whatever, the older school GI style helmets that have the ears over it. Plus it's a lot harder to have comms in there. You have to wear the band underneath the helmet. Not that comfortable. Uh, this, you can bolt the ears directly on, have your comms set up all in one unit and uh, you don't have to worry about it. So I like that. Um, but simple, you know, standard configuration. Most modern ballistic helmets or bump helmets have a similar configuration. They look very similar and uh, have basically the same style of cuts. Although uh, this one, I, I can appreciate. I can appreciate, again, the overall look uh, of the helmet. I think it's a good looking helmet. Uh, a lot of the more affordable helmets you see are like older school ops core designs. The Velcro is kind of outdated and it doesn't look that good and the colors are off. This is a really good olive drab green or ranger green. I forget exactly what they're calling it. They might just be calling it green but I like this color configuration. Uh, it looks good and uh, you could dress it up with different camo patterns and break up the pattern. You could run scrim on it, whatever. Um, currently in the US they are only offering black tan or this green uh, you guys saw the black in the video where we shot it as well as earlier in this one here's the green and the tan one unfortunately I don't have one to show you uh, but that would be sick so they do offer other colors multicam multicam black different stuff like that um, on the protection group Denmark website but again that's an overseas thing and they're not yet available for the US market so uh, you only get three colorways but again most helmets 
that's what you're doing anyway. You could always put a helmet cover on it. You could always paint it. You could scrim it. Whatever you got to do. Get on Dynamic Fuzz and spend $300 to accent every single one of these little Velcro plots. Whatever. You know, it, the, the world is your oyster, but um, I do like the green. All right, pads. Let's talk pads. Um, these things are nice. They are comfortable. Although I will say, in all of the promotional pictures and videos that I saw on these helmets, they came with some really classy, drippy-looking pinstriped pads, and I'm a little disappointed that I got just the all-black ones. That being said, uh, they give you a bunch of them in the box with it, enough, obviously, to fill out the helmet and to size it properly to your head. It is memory foam padding, so it's very squishy and comforting and gel-like feeling, and uh, it's supposed to absorb a lot of that impact and that concussion uh, that you might ensue after getting shot in the head with something uh, and as well be very comfortable to wear on your head and it is a hundred percent I've got some hours on this helmet several hours actually at this point and uh, it is very comfortable the one thing I will say about the pads though is that they hold moisture so if it's hot and you're sweaty or whatever, we're just wearing the helmet, even if you're cold, you're gonna sweat in it, and that could even become a bigger issue in the cold because then the cold sweat or the sweat's gonna get cold and that's gonna freeze, and you're gonna your head's gonna be cold and it's gonna be a problem and whatever. So uh, these pads definitely retain moisture, they definitely hold sweat, but uh, they're easy enough to take on and out. You can wash them, no big deal. And uh, they are super comfortable and form-fitting. And I could definitely imagine, of course, I haven't worn this while getting shot in the head with it, uh, but I could definitely imagine that these pads would provide protection against back face deformation and, uh, you know, keep your head secure as long as your helmet is properly adjusted to you. And that being said, that leads us to the BOA system here on the back. So this you can tighten or loosen to fit to your head properly it's a little tensioning system and uh, then you can adjust your clip and your uh, your chin strap and all that stuff and fit it perfectly to your head and that is important okay so you got a lot of stuff going on especially if you're running nods or thermals or the uh, camera whatever you're doing um, you want the helmet to be balanced it doesn't have to be the lightest thing but it, it does need to be evenly balanced because then you're going to not get a hot spot it will be more comfortable you'll be able to wear your helmet longer and if you're doing stuff where you require a helmet like this you probably want to keep it on Probably. So uh, the BOA system is nice, definitely works well, easy to adjust one way or another and fit properly to your head. And then the chin strap, just ballistic nylon, uh, little felt leather style lining on the chin piece. No big deal, pretty standard affair, um, but I do like the tensioning system. That's the one thing that uh, the ATE HHV does not have in the ballistic, at least the Gen 2. I don't know about the light. Uh, they might have an upgraded tensioning system there, but at least in the standard one, uh, they do not. So that's a nice little touch here on the PDG. So that leaves us with a couple things left to talk about, and uh, we'll get to them. But the first thing is the weight. So this helmet, I believe, is like three pounds, right at three pounds, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but basically right at three pounds. And, you know, compared to the super lightweight offerings from OpsCore or Team Wendy, that sounds like a lot because they're offering helmets that are a pound and a half, two pounds, whatever it may be. And that's all well and good, and it will be more comfortable to wear those for a longer extended period of time given it is properly balanced with a proper counterweight for whatever device you're running up front. Um, that being said, those helmets are made out of polyethylene or whatever I think it is, and uh, they definitely catch shrap and have stopped rifle rounds at certain distances because they lost enough velocity or hit it at the right enough angle to catch a ricochet, um, but... They really, really sacrifice back face deformation um, for that weight or lack thereof. Where something like this, a more traditional Kevlar slash Aramid style armored helmet, ballistic helmet, uh, it is more durable and will have less back face deformation and will hold up to more abuse and more hits and more, you know, a, a wider range of threats, not just shrap, okay? So you're going to have bump protection, you're going to have shrap protection, and also if somebody shoots you with a 9, a 40, a 45, you know, a 44 Magnum, a, a 12 gauge shotgun with slugs or buckshot or whatever, and all the other little things in between, again, reference the video we did when we shot one of these 
place to see all of the different cool guns and random weird off the beaten path calibers that we used on it and it held up to pretty much all of them except for one maybe two but the judgment's still out on that one you guys go watch the video and decide for yourselves but i think it performed excellently especially for what it is especially for the money and uh i, I couldn't be happier, especially since I got it for free, of course. But if I had paid $600 or a little bit less, which is, I think, what they go for, like $560 or $590, something to that effect, I would not be disappointed whatsoever. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the front of the helmet, and this is where I find the helmet to be lacking the most, uh, which is unfortunate because obviously it's a pretty big deal as far as a helmet like this is concerned uh, for the mounting apparatus. So, here on the Protection Group Denmark, out of the box, it is plastic, polymer, plastic, whatever. I don't even think it's polymer. I think it's just some kind of ABS plastic or something like that. Um, and that's all well and good enough, I suppose. There's, you know, six, seven hundred dollar Opscore bump helmets that the shroud is built into the helmet and not replaceable and made out of plastic or polymer and eventually that's going to wallow away and become loose and get to a point potentially down the road where it's not even usable anymore. So if this were to happen because these mounts that we slide in here have little sharp edges that interface, you know, into the mount itself, um, the housing, the shroud to uh, to keep them secure in there, and if this is plastic, metal versus plastic, metal's going to win every time. That being said, it is replaceable, so you can unbolt it and bolt on whatever you know aftermarket mount that should fit this standard bolt pattern. And uh, it's cool then too; you can configure it in different colors, whatever. It'll be metal, um, but you know that's extra money out of your pocket, out of the box. Now, can this mount be used? Of course, I'm utilizing it currently right now. The problem is, is uh, out of the box, without being shimmed, any night vision mount I put in it was extremely loose. Let's take a look. But first, let me show you how it's shimmed up here. So uh, we'll take the mount out if we can't. Oh, there we go, dropping the tripod. So all I did to shim it up was literally stick uh, one of these little Velcro extra Velcro pieces from one of my HHV helmets in here because it was thick enough uh, to create, you know, a little bit of pressure on the mount and that way it sits snug in the housing because without that, let's give you a look at it, without that, um, a lot of play, a lot of play, way more play. Um, than my HHV ballistic or bump uh, and again those are metal they're aluminum shrouds this is plastic and this already has some wiggle and some wobble so again is this completely usable as is of course uh, is it just a minor inconvenience and annoyance at least for now sure but this makes noise and uh, it's not going to be the most stable thing and uh, you know it's not going to properly index your nod for your correct inner pupillary distance every time if it's just moving around Around like that so and again for uh, to prove that it's not you know just the mount here is uh, well here's the HHV and there's a Rhino so we'll take the Argus off put it on the HHV yeah, let's see all right so this tiny tiny little bit of movement almost imperceivable uh definitely a drastic change from the pdg here and it's plastic mount so the uh the hardhead veterans is metal okay so you could probably even get the same exact uh shroud they sell them on their website separately make sure you check out the link pinned in the comment section below as well as use the discount code tt10 gets you free shipping on anything you order from them um, but you could probably even buy one of these and add it to this helmet and uh, not only would it be metal now it would also be a lot tighter of a fit um so there's that that's what that looks like here's a rhino here's a uh, Nerodos rhino a real one and uh, older school technology compared to the more modern Wilcox style of today. And uh, let's put this guy in there and see how he fares. Same thing. A lot of movement. Again, is it the end of the world? Is it the worst thing ever? No. Do other helmets, even more expensive helmets, have play in the mounts like this? Sure. But um, again... 
This is the competitor. HHV would be the competitor in the price bracket to these PDGs, and uh, they're giving you a little bit better feature set out of the box. Again, here's the Rhino um, in the HHV. Very minimal, if any, movement whatsoever. So uh, definitely, definitely a, a knock on the, the PDG for not only having a polymer shroud, but also the spec not quite being right. So again, perhaps not the end of the world. You could shove whatever in there to uh, stiffen up the connection between the shroud and the mount and to shim it up and make sure it doesn't move because like I said, this one little extra Velcro button uh, fits in there and creates the perfect amount of tension to where this thing is now rock solid. So it's not really a problem anymore. That being said, I still would like this to be metal and uh, whenever this one starts showing any significant wear, I'll swap it out for a metal one and uh, do a video on that and all that. No big deal. Um, should be quick and easy, although I'm sure I'll find a way to screw it up. Um, but yeah, so again, you could do whatever, shove some Ranger Bands back here. You could stuff some paper. A lot of people do tape because then you could also use the tape, peel it off different sections for you know repairs on gear or whatever else you may need. Um, there's a bunch of stuff you could shove back here to shim this up and make it fit right and uh, then also have a little bit of extra added utility, so that's cool too. Um, the other knock on the front part of the helmet, the bungees, your retaining straps, for your nod, the stabilizing straps, you know, whatever it may be, um, they hook to themselves. And if you unhook one of these or both of these, I guess if you unhooked both of them and you had duels or whatever, uh, or quads, although you're probably not hanging them off a helmet like this, but if you did only need one of these, you could hook this into your device, but then this other one just hangs gets in the way, pokes you in the eye, because there's no specific spot on the actual shroud itself where these interface with or lock in or stay out of the way. Let me show you what I mean. So to switch it up, here is the HHV ATE bump, and uh, even this for $230 has an aluminum shroud, and the shroud has the built-in retainers for the bungee system. So when you're not using them, they are stowed properly, attached to this, and separate from each other. That way, if you did need to just use one, you could clip in, retain your nod, whatever. This other one is stowed away, not in the way, and uh, again, that's all off of an actual metal shroud right there. So so it depends what you need, ballistic or bump. Again, this video is about PDG, not HHV, but they are, again, competitors in my opinion, and I'm here being realistic. All these helmets I got sent to for free um, from PDG as well as HHV, and I'm just being honest. Uh, I, I love and appreciate both of them, uh, all of them. I, I really do not see too much wrong in the grand scheme of things with any of these helmets, um, but if we're sitting here doing a review or at least an initial impressions, and I'm always going to be honest here on this channel, that's what it is. So again, for improvements, it's something simple, even if the price goes up a little bit, metal shroud, that you can hook into uh, without having to have the two bungees hooked into each other. So what do I think overall, initial impressions so far? Again, we've shot one of these helmets. Um, it's held up excellently for the rounds that we threw at it. Um, I've been using this, getting some hours on it. This is my current setup on it, uh, is the PDG Arch with the Nocturnal Tendencies Argus running the Psionics Aurora with the Lion's Gear Solutions 3D printed mount uh, interfaces with, you know, Wilcox style housing. And uh, this is pretty much my backup helmet to uh, the HHV, which is more set up with a TMVC Mohawk and this, that, and the third for my PVS 14. That being said, I've got a Wilcox uh, style adapter, J Arm, for the PVS 14 and can easily run it on this helmet and have ran it on this helmet. And of course, obviously, it'll take the Rhino mount as well. Um, but I do kind of like the newer Wilcox style mounts. It sits lower profile, it's lighter weight, it's really smooth to adjust and use, and can't complain about that. But as far as being a YouTube gun channel dork, uh, this is nice because A, I can pass it off to one of my buddies that doesn't have night vision and they can use this because believe it or not, the Psionics Aurora. It's digital, but it is night vision and can be used to great effect with proper training and uh, practice and enough supplemental IR illumination if need be. So obviously a PVS-14 is way better, 
It's also way more expensive. So if you're the common man, I'd rather have 10 dudes with a Psyonix Aurora and uh, you know they know how to use it and they train with it all the time as opposed to a couple dudes that bought nods and just flex them on Instagram. So it works. And again, this is mostly for content filming, night vision filming, seeing IR illumination, IR lasers, doing all that testing stuff that we've been doing here on the channel. If you're interested in any of that, make sure you go check it out. But again, also a viable budget entry level night vision option overall. Um, so running that up front, again, Unity Spark IR beacon. We've got some spare battery for our handhelds, weapon lights, whatever. And then in here in the 100 Concepts uh, candy pouch, I've got spare batteries for the Psyonix. I've got a USB, micro USB to charge the Psyonix. I've got spare bolts for the Lion's Gear mount. I've got all types of different accoutrements back here and we will delve into the helmet setup more in the future when I get this thing fully kitted because I'm going to have ears for it and you know more stuff. I got to get an admin light for it, all this, that, and the third and uh, it's going to be sick and we might even upgrade this on here down the load, down the load, and <laughs> down, don't go downing loads people please, um, <laughs> but wash your loads with downy. Not a paid promotion. They'd actually probably sue me if they found out. But uh, maybe down the road, we will uh, upgrade that to another PVS-14. Or maybe I'll take that other PVS-14 and bridge it with the one I already got and do green FOSS and white FOSS and not be able to see shit. Who knows? Um, but either way, overall, I'm honestly very impressed with the helmet. I think it's more than fair enough with the price for the feature set. The quality seems there. Again, a few little things. The mount should be in better spec. It should be metal. Again, HHV is doing it for the same price, basically. I would like to see the retainers be retained somewhere other than by themselves. And uh, definitely would like those cool pinstripe pads. But other than that, it's super sick. I think it's an excellent entry-level option. But again, I don't think that it's just an entry level option i think even if you did have dual tubes or quad nods or whatever you know you could run some 31 alphas off this thing you could run anything you want off this thing it's ballistic we've proven that it's not super heavy it's real kevlar and aramid uh it's assembled in denmark but pressed in bulgaria so at least it's not china i suppose we can give them that i don't know how much better bulgaria is but i guess it is bulletproof so we found out the fit and finish is nice on it Again, arc rail compatibility and uh, a good looking high cut helmet with a really nice, cool, modern, aggressive Velcro pattern uh, that does allow all types of custom configuration. So at the end of the day, I think these things are sick. I don't see me having any further problems with the helmet other than again, you know, the mount. We're gonna take care of that when the time comes. But uh, in the meantime, I'm really digging it. So if you guys are interested in these helmets, there's a bunch of videos on them already other than mine, but feel free to check mine out. Feel free to check the link pinned in the comment section below that takes you to where you can buy one of these if you're interested. And again, even if you don't have nods, even if you don't have thermal, a helmet, bump or ballistic is still important. It's a very important piece of your kit and uh, can quite literally save your life, even if you're just doing stuff for fun on the range and it's not the end of the world in the Bouja Hadeen. So check them out. Um, by all means, check all the links pinned in the comment section below. Make sure you check the first three links in the description box below because those are to help you fight for your God-given, inalienable, constitutionally protected and reaffirmed but inherent by birth gun rights. Somebody's got to do it. That's us, we the people. And uh, leave it in the comment section below. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. That stuff helps out a ton. Constantly fighting the uphill YouTube anti-gun algorithm. And uh, until next time, get your kit squared away. Because if you've seen my videos before, you might remember that at this point in the video, I remind you, well, you know. <laughs>